nicotine. 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 Could this be the forgotten nootropic? Today we're going to talk about, yes, nicotine could be, can be addictive. Vaping, smoking, probably not a great idea. But from a cognitive performance perspective, if you're not using it, you're probably handicapping yourself. And from a pharmacological point of view, it delivers what it's supposed to do. How are you taking your nicotine? Are you vaping it, smoking it? Are you using a transdermal patch? Are you using a gum? What are you using? A buckle turkey. That's it. Let's get to it. So nicotine, we're going to talk about it. We're going to get down deep in the science. What we're going to talk about, though, is actually the nicotine molecule itself. So not in other compounds like vaping products, cigarettes, but we're going to touch on that. The reason why they're more addicting is because there are other products in those, not just nicotine. The natural forms of nicotine are combusted together with all of these other uh, parts of the plant right. that actually are not friendly to your lungs. More nicotine, true, but also more of the additives as well. There was a study about how much more addictive cigarettes are and vaping products specifically because of those added products in there. 30 or 40 years ago, there really weren't any other products like the ones that we have now. It was just cigarettes. And we do know that cigarettes kill people. Like, there's no doubt about it. The key for you and I and this discussion is that we're not talking about cigarettes. We're not talking about vaping products. We're talking about pure synthetic, so non-tobacco derived nicotine as being your safest and most precise that you can use at very low doses and see really amazing things in cognitive memory, focus, attention, verbal fluidity. This is something that we use both from the cat team, but also as a replacement product as well. Sometimes.